Hi Tacoma, welcome back to your third grade TV classroom. Today is Tuesday, November 24th, and I'm Mrs. Oslin. I hope you notice that our TV classroom looks a little bit different today. Mr. Kevin worked really hard and got us a new backdrop, and it's going to help make the color of our faces look a little bit better than the contrast of the yellow. So I hope you like it, we love it, let's get started. Go ahead and take a moment and think about what zone you're in. Think about what emotion are you feeling? Think about your I message. You'll remember an I message sounds like I feel hmm because hmm. And pay really close attention to how strongly you're feeling your emotion. Take some think time. Now, turn and share your iMessage with your learning buddy, someone in the room with you, or with me on the screen. You'll remember it's really important for us to practice sharing our iMessage so that other people know how we're feeling and why. We've also been thinking about making sure that we're using really descriptive words to talk about how we're feeling. So instead of just saying sad, I might feel disappointed. Or instead of happy, I might really be feeling thankful. We also were thinking about when we're feeling a feeling that's a four or a five on the feeling thermometer, that we need to use our stop and stay cool steps before we say or do something that we know we shouldn't. We've been working on finding win-win solutions when we have a conflict with someone. And you'll remember a win-win solution is one in which both people get some of what they want and both people feel okay with the outcome. We've also been practicing using the peace path to help us solve a conflict that we have with someone. Step one on the peace path is to tell the problem. And this is where both people get an opportunity to share their iMessage and say it back. It's important to say back someone's iMessage so that everybody knows how everybody feels and why. Step two on the peace path is to brainstorm or think of possible win-win solutions. Some win-win solutions that we've been talking about are share, take turns, apologize, get help. What's the other one? I always forget the other one. Share, take turns, apologize, fix the problem. There it is. I always forget fix the problem. Fix the problem is when, for example, if you do something and you didn't mean to, like you knock your friend's blocks over, fixing the problem would be helping them pick up the blocks. So I bet I'll remember that one next time. And then step three is both people come together and discuss or talk about what their win-win solution was. And together, you pick one that you're going to try to solve the problem. Now, I want you to look at this picture and think about how these children are playing soccer. What is that emotion called when maybe someone wants to play soccer, but they don't know anyone else on the team? How would that feel? And what's the name of that emotion? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy the name of the emotion for when you want to try something, but you don't know anyone on the team. I heard some of you say shy, and that's what I was thinking too. Today, we're gonna to learn how to develop an awareness for when others or you feel shy. And awareness means knowing that someone is feeling shy and what to do about it. Now, think about how it feels or sounds when someone is shy. If someone has to get up in front of a class to give a speech or a presentation, how does their body feel? What's happening in their brain? Take some think time. How does it feel or what does it look like when someone else is feeling shy? Mm -hmm. 
turn and tell your learning buddy what it looks or sounds or feels like to be shy. Rafa, I know that when I'm feeling shy, I feel my face get hot and red. I kind of start to sweat and my hands might get kind of shaky and I feel like I want to leave. Like if I have to give a presentation, I feel like I just want to leave and not be there. And also my voice shakes. So that's what it sounds like for other people when I'm feeling shy. Now, you might have said something different than what I said, because we all react differently to different emotions, and that's okay. Today, we're gonna talk more about what it's like for you to be shy, and it's important for you to be aware of what it's like when other people are shy, because like I said, we might not act the same way when we're shy. Now, I've added the emotion shy to our feelings tree, and I definitely don't think that shy is associated with happy because when I'm shy, I'm not feeling happy. I didn't think it was associated with being mad. Those are very different emotions to me. And it's not really sad. So I put shy up on its own branch because I think it's a different emotion than happy or sad or mad. Now we're gonna go through some situations and I want you to think about how shy you would feel using the feelings thermometer. If I say a situation and you're like, I would not feel shy at all, that would be a zero. If I give a situation and you would feel shy, like a two or a three where you might start to feel kind of shaky or feel hot in your face, but you wouldn't necessarily like want to leave or shut down, that would be like a two or a three. Now, if you are feeling shy a four or a five on the feeling thermometer, that would be where you feel like you want to leave and you feel like you just can't get through whatever it is that you're going to do. So thinking back to the first situation where if someone wants to join a soccer team, but they don't know anyone on the team, if that wouldn't really make you feel shy, that would be a zero. If you feel like you would feel shy and you might be um, kind of shaky and hot, but you could still do it, that would be a two or a three. If you wanted to join a soccer team and you didn't know anyone on the team and you would then not join the team because you were so shy, that would be a four or a five. So let's think through some situations. If you are going from second to third grade in your school. So you're not changing school, you would have a new teacher and a new class probably, but you would still be at your school. How shy would you be? Take some think time. Now, use the feelings thermometer and tell your learning buddy how shy you would be. Gus, if I was going from second to third grade, but at my school, I might feel a one shy, maybe a little, um, but really not too shy because I feel like I would be around lots of people that I already knew. Again, it's important to be aware of how strongly different people would feel emotions because that situation going from second to third grade at your school might be a five for you, but it's like a one for me. So it's important for us to be able to talk about and think about how different situations make us feel differently. Let's look at another situation. Think about how shy you would feel going to a new school where you do not know anyone. Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy how shy you would feel. Rafa, going to a new school where I do not know anyone, I would feel a three on the feeling thermometer shy, where I would be pretty shaky, I feel like my face would be red and my voice might shake, and I would get kind of sweaty, but I would still be able to do it. Again, 
you might have felt differently than I did because we all feel different emotions or different strengths of emotions in different situations. Let's look at another one. If you are going to be talking about a favorite movie in front of the whole class, how shy would you feel? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy how shy you would feel talking about a favorite movie in front of your whole class. Rafa, I would feel probably a two because I get kind of shy talking in front of large groups, but if I'm talking about my favorite movie, then that would make me feel a little bit better. So I would feel a two shy. Let's look at one more situation. No, think of your own. What would make you feel a number five shy? What would make you so shy that you would want to leave and you would not be able to do it? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what would make you feel a five shy. Rafa, I would feel a five shy if I had to get a new job where I didn't know anyone and if I really didn't know the job. I would feel really shy. Now, thinking about how, sh how shy you would feel and recognizing how shy other people would feel is important. But what do you do when you feel a five shy? You can use the stop and stay cool steps. The stop and stay cool steps aren't just when you're feeling a five angry, they're when you're feeling a five any emotion. And you'll remember, let's practice Think about your situation that would make you feel a five shy. And let's practice going through the stop and stay cool steps. First, you say, I feel like I'm losing control. Go ahead. Second, you stop. Practice doing that with me. Stop. Third, you give yourself a chili hug. Go ahead and do that. You're gonna practice breathing in for five and then exhaling out your mouth, blowing really hard all that shyness out. Do this with me. Then hopefully you might still be feeling shy, but you're not feeling shy so strongly that you can't go on with whatever it is that was gonna make you feel a five shy. Another strategy that you can use to help you when you are feeling a five shy is called positive self-talk. Say positive self-talk. Positive self-talk is when you say positive things to yourself to help you Get through the feeling of shy so that you can go on and still do what you need to do. Now, I said that my situation that would make me feel a five shy on the feelings thermometer is if I had a new job where I didn't know anyone and it was a new to me job where I didn't know what to do. I didn't know the job either. It's positive self-talk that I could say is Mrs. Oslin, you can do this. You can ask questions and it's okay not to know. That would be some good positive self-talk that I would use in my five shyness situation. Think about what is some positive self-talk that you could use in your situation that would make you feel a five on the feelings thermometer. Take some think time.
Now, turn and tell your learning buddy what is the positive self-talk that you could use when you're feeling a five on the shy feelings thermometer. Oh, I heard lots of really strong positive self-talk. What works for you may not work for me, and what works for me may not work for you. That's why it's important for you to be aware of what does work for you when you are feeling shy a four or a five on the feelings thermometer. So today we talked a lot about developing an awareness, that means being aware, paying attention to when others or you feel shy. And we learned two strategies for you to use when you're feeling a five on the shy feelings thermometer. You can use the stop and stay cool steps and you can use positive self-talk. Now your independent work today, we have been reading biography. For your independent reading today, I want you to read a biography and then use this reading response to biography form that is in your ELA packet. It includes the title of the biography and what you learned about the person, the subject of the biography. And you're gonna develop an opinion on that person. Think about how would you describe them? What are their character traits? You'll remember your opinion is what you think or feel about someone. And then you're gonna write, if you had to describe the person in one word, it would be, hmm, because, hmm. You're also going to write about a time when you were shy and what you did about it to get through it. You can also continue using this how to stay focused chart if you're reading independently and you find yourself thinking about something other than what your book is about. Also continue adding to your reading log and sending that into your teacher so that they know what you're working on and the goals that you're setting. Now this is your five minute break. Make sure that you take care of your needs, but also gather the materials that you will need for math with Mrs. Wally. She's back with us today. You're gonna need your whiteboard and marker, your learning buddy, and your counters. So make good decision, gather those materials, and be back here ready to go for math. Thank you so much for thinking and feeling with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I will see you back here next week on Monday. Bye.
Hi, third graders. Oh, it feels so good to be back in our classroom. I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad to be back with Rafa and Pebble. I have missed them so much. Are you ready for True or False Tuesday? Get ready, here we go. 143 minus 100 equals 43. Hmm, true or false? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, you have 143, you take 100 away, you have 43 left. Oh dear. Oh, Mrs. Wally, I did it again. <sighs> Third graders, you're so patient with me. Thank you. True. All right. 141 minus 21 equals 22. Hmm. Is that true or is that false? Why do we say it's false? Rafa, can you tell us why it's false? Oh, Rafa said, well, if you just use the 41 and you take away 21, that equals 20. So it would be 120. Is that even close? And if you did 22 plus 21, you would get 43. Is that even close to 141? No, this is definitely, definitely false. All right, let's do the next one. 137 minus 22 equals 115. Hmm, true or false? Ding, 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 ding. How do we know it's true? Pebble, what do you think? Pebble said, I'm gonna use the same strategy as Rafa. I'm gonna take 37 and subtract 22. What is 37 minus 22? 15. And then, what it, but, but it's not 15, it's 115. Oh, you said I wasn't done, Mrs. Wally. Then we add the other 100 back in and we get 115. Do you agree? Ding, 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 it's true. Hmm. 137 minus 115 equals 122. Now stop. Is that reasonable? Is this a reasonable answer? Do we even need to do the math? If we have 137 and we take away 115, are we going to have a difference that's in the hundreds? No, it is false, false, false. Not even close. Right? We didn't even have to do the math to know that that is not a reasonable answer. If I have a hundred something and I take away a hundred something, I am not gonna have a hundred something left. Wow. Right? Wah, wah. Very, very false. You ready? Now, this one, if I have 200 something and I take away a hundred something, Am I probably gonna have about a hundred something left? Seems a little more reasonable, right? Let's see if it's accurate. Go ahead and solve. Is this true or false? Ding, 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 ding. How do you know it's true? What did you do to solve it? 37 minus 15 is 22. And 200 minus 100 is 100. So 237 minus 115 is 122, right? Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. True. I love mental math. I think it's so fun. Today, we're going to continue learning to multiply one digit numbers with multiples of 10. And I have my base 10 blocks and I'm so happy about it. So we are going to continue working on those problems we started on yesterday. Are you ready? It says use any strategy to find the product four times 40. Go ahead, solve. Hmm. 
Mr. Kevin, don't show my whiteboard, okay? How you doing? You doing okay? Did, did some of you solve it? Are some of you stuck? That's okay. Mr. Kevin's gonna show you my whiteboard. And I want you just to take a look at what I did. What do you see? Yeah, I have four groups of 40. Okay. This feels big, four times 40 makes me think, I, I don't know. Well, friends, what is four groups of four? Mm -hmm. 16. This is the number 40 is also what? Four tens. What if I say four groups of four tens? Does that look like this? Yeah. Four groups of four tens. Well, how many tens would I have then? What's four times four? It equals 16 tens. What is 16 tens? If four groups of four tens is the same as four groups of 40, then 16 tens is the same as, yes, 160. Four tens is four with a zero in the ones place. 16 tens is 16 with a zero in the ones place. Let's count and check. 40, 80. 40, 80. What is 80 plus 80? 160. See, you did it. I was talking with second graders about this. Sometimes when we get really confident in doing smaller digits, then we get bigger digits and our brains go, whoa, we'll freak out. And so what do we do? We do our calm down strategies because we have learned strategies to help us solve problems that we're not sure how to solve. So we rely on these strategies. That's why we pull out these base 10 blocks. Because when you were first learning to add one digit and one digit numbers, guess what we used? We use counters because it helps us understand. So. Here we go, we have our manipulative. You can draw base 10 blocks on your whiteboard if you don't have them at home. You could even cut strips of paper and pretend they're tens and do it with me, okay? All right, let's go on to the next one. We're gonna move slow. A store ordered five boxes of watermelons, okay? Each box has 20 watermelons in it. How many watermelons did the store order? So I want you to think about it. Five boxes, and there are equal groups in each box of 20 watermelons. So each box has 20 in it. Go ahead, model it. No equation right now. I want you to draw it or use base 10 blocks or use cut paper strips to model five boxes with 20 watermelons. I do not want to see you drawing 20 circles. I want you to use tens because that's not efficient and it's not something you're gonna be able to use over time, okay? So either draw lines for tens or use tens, build a model of five boxes, 20 watermelons in each box. Ready, go. Don't show mine, Mr. Kevin, I'm gonna build it. Okay. We're just building. You don't have to find the solution. You're just building the model. That's all you're doing. Okay, we're gonna go step by step. And you're gonna see by the end, you're gonna go, oh, I can do that, no problem. It just feels scary and that's okay. But you're a strong mathematician. Keep trying. Five boxes or groups with 20 in each box. 
We don't have 20 boxes with five watermelons. However, we can solve it that way by counting by fives if we wanted to, but we're not gonna do that because counting by tens is easier. Okay, Mr. Kevin, go ahead, show them my model. What do you see? Hmm, what was that, Rafa? Rafa said, well, you have five groups. Yeah, I have a group here. Box, 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 box. I have five boxes. And what's my rate? How many are in each of my boxes? Well, how many is that? 20. Equals, we don't know. Okay. So what are we going to do? How do you want to solve this? How could you count it? I mean, you can see it here. Can you count by 20? Do you know how to skip count by 20s? We could do 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20, right? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. What if you couldn't skip count by 20s, but you could skip count by 10s? Could you do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100? You could. What about breaking up this? Could you do three times 20 and two times 20? So instead of five times 20, we would do two plus three times 20. So we could do 20 times two plus, or two times 20, sorry, two times 20 plus three times 20. Well, what is two times 20? What's two times two? Four. So what's two times two tens? 40. What's three times two? Six. What's three times two tens? 60. What's 40 plus 60? 100. We got the same answer. We did the same thing. Look. I have to check. Two, four, six. Actually, it was like this. Two, four. Two, four, six. 20, 40. 10, 20, 40, 60. 60, 40, 100. How cool is that? There's more than one way to figure it out. Okay. So we think they ordered 100 watermelons. We actually don't think. We know. We can prove it with our base 10 blocks. There are 40 nickels in a roll of nickels. Tao has seven rolls of nickels. How many nickels does she have in all? Think about how many groups does she have and how many are in each group. This time I want you to draw it to solve it. I'm gonna solve, you're gonna solve, don't look at mine yet. No peeking, ready, go. Mr. Kevin, go ahead and show them my answer. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Wally. What did you do? Well, four times 10 is 40, right? So I decompose it. Boop. 
I need 7 times 40. If I put my parentheses here, would I have 7 times 40? Yes. But remember, you can reorder them if you need to. And I know multiplying by 10 is really easy, but multiplying by 40 is not as easy. So 7 times 4 is 28. 28 times 10 is 280. So 7 times 40 is 280. Let's do this. What is 40 plus 40? We're going to keep track of our groups. 40 plus 40, that's 80. 40 plus 40, that's 80. 40 plus 40, that's 80. And then an extra 40. What is 80 plus 80 plus 80? What is it? 240 plus 40 is 280. Did we get it? Some of you may have drawn all your base 10 blocks and counted by tens. Totally fine. But that was a way you could show it with numbers. I want you to multiply 7 times 30. Show your work. Go. I'm going to do it too. I'm going to show my work. Are you ready? Take a look at what I did. 7 times 30 is the same as 7 times 3 times 10, right? Yeah. Well, 7 times 3, I know. It's 21. Times 10? Well, that's easy. You put a 0 in the 1's place. 210. Then I checked my work. 30 plus 30 is 60, right? 30 plus 30 is 60. 30 plus 30 is 60, and a 30 left over. 60 three times is 180. Plus 30, 210. We did it. Now you may be going, Mrs. Wally, whew, this is tricky, but you're a strong mathematician, and this is the first time we've done this. Don't worry, we're gonna keep working on this and working on it slowly. So I want you to practice drawing with those base 10 blocks, and you might try pulling it apart a little bit like I've done in these problems. You can always email me or write me a letter or call your teacher if it's feeling confusing, okay? So you don't need to sit at home and just get really frustrated. If it gets frustrated, you stop, you call your teacher and ask for help, okay? All right. Today we created models. We used efficient strategies, decomposing a factor, skip counting, using facts we know, and we explained how we got our answer. Don't forget, the next three days we don't have school, so that our families can celebrate Thanksgiving and Native American Heritage Day. So there's no school Wednesday, November 25th through Friday, November 27th. Also, on Wednesday, December 2nd, you will want to make sure you tune in because Brad Evans, the former Sounders player, is coming to our studio. He's going to be sitting in our chairs. And rumor has it, he's picked his favorite book he's going to read to us. And Ms. Oslin and I get to ask questions, which is going to be great. And Wednesday, December 9th, Superintendent Carla Santorno is also going to be in our studio, and we're going to learn all about her as well. So friends, time for our quick affirmation because I'm out of time. Ooh. Here is your affirmation. Are you ready? My challenges help me grow because we don't grow unless we're challenged. Deep breath. My challenges help me grow. Your turn. Excellent job, third graders. We will see you next week. Have a great holiday. Bye.
Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.